guys, what's up? My name's Aiden, and today we're going to be talking about what it's like to be a Disney fan in Australia. The other day I had the privilege of speaking to the members of Thingamavlogs, so if you don't know, Leo, Patrick, Sarah and Tiff, and they were absolutely incredible. But Leo asked a very valid question, and that was how I'm such a big Disney fan living in Australia. And I thought about this question a lot, because really, None of my friends and most of my family don't have the same love and appreciation for Disney as I do. So I thought I'd make a video and sort of share my story with you guys. So starting off with the American side of my obsession, um, I have visited the Disneyland Resort about eight times so far in my lifetime. I've visited both parks multiple times and I've actually stayed at all three of the Disney hotels. So I've stayed at the Disneyland Hotel, the Grand Californian Hotel, and this year I managed to stay at the Paradise Pier Hotel as well. And for Walt Disney World, I have visited there three times. I visited the four theme parks. Um, we wanted to visit the water parks, but they were closed during our recent visit. Um, and I've stayed at three of the hotels, the Pop Century, All Star Movies, and All Star Sports. When I visited uh, Walt Disney World in 2005, I actually got to be one of the kids picked for the Festival of the Lion King, which happens in Animal Kingdom. And I like got to walk around and like, be part of a Walt Disney World Park show which is incredible and I have pictures from it and it was an amazing 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 experience and I remember that so well <laughs> and I went back and watched it this year and I was like I was in this the last time I was here but now I'm too old to get picked so that sucks but at least it happened when it did Alongside the parks, I've actually been on two Disney cruises. The first one that I don't really remember anything from, we left from Florida and we went to the Bahamas and with that we also went to like Castaway Key, like Disney's little private island thing. And the second cruise, which I do remember, we left from California and we actually took the cruise to Canada. So for Disneyland, I've actually been there during the 45th, the 50th, the 55th and the 60th anniversary celebrations. My parents might have been there for the 40th, we're not really sure. Going to the Disney parks as much as I have, people often question why and how. Um, basically, my mom was a travel agent and she was obsessed with America, so we kind of just all followed and I uh, sort of fell in love with them that way. And I just and wait with anticipation until I get a chance to go back. But because Disney isn't as, as established here as it is in America, a lot of my friends are like, why? And I'm like, because I love it. <laughs> At the parks, um, other than the rides, the shows, the other attractions, um, a big part of what we do is buying merch. Um, I sort of have a few collections that are ever growing. Ever since my first trip to Disney Park, we've been filling out the auto books with the character meet and greets. So we normally get the ones where you have the picture and the autographs in the same book. So it, you know, keeps everything together and super nice. I also have an ever-growing collection of Disney plushies. These are just a few. So I have Peter Pan here and a little little experiment 626 going on. Love me some Stitch. I'm actually wearing my Stitch beanie in honor of like the Stitch dance that, you know, the Stitch dance. If you know what I mean, then you know what I mean. Probably the collection that I'm most proud of so far is my Disney pin trading collection. And I'm just more a pin collector more than a pin trader because there's not really anyone to trade pins here. Whenever I visit the parks, I always make sure to try to find new pins. And I always get like one more plushie to add to my collection. And yeah. I haven't been to the parks in Asia and I haven't been to Disneyland in Paris either. I've only been to the ones in America. So that's just a very brief overview and now I'm sort of going to talk about how I incorporate Disney into my everyday life at home considering there's no parks here. Basically I just sort of pimp out my room with as much Disney merchandise as possible. Because A, it makes it look super cool and two, it makes me super happy and it brings back a lot of memories from the parks and it's just amazing. I was actually lucky enough to be alive when the Disney stores were still open in Australia. They had Disney stores here for a very limited time, they all closed around 2003 which was over 10 years ago now. It's insane. I remember being so devastated when those stores closed because where else am I meant to get my source of Disney magic all year round now? Like, there's still nowhere. I used to get, like, the toys of the main characters when a new Disney movie would come out. Um, you used to get, like, the light spinny things. You press a button, there's a character that, like, the light spins. They still sell them in at the Disneyland Resort. Now, I don't really know what they're called, but they were really cool. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we used to buy a bunch of stuff from there, and that sort of was the main official Disney source that kept us going. My brother and I used to play a lot of video games to do with Disney. Uh, we used to play a lot on our PS2. There was a Monsters, Inc. game that I... the name of it is failing me at the moment. But we used to play a lot of Disney games on the PS2, and also we used to go on DisneyChannel.com.au and play the Disney Channel games available on there. 
and sometimes I still play them. Um, the most sort of mainstream, obvious Disney thing that most people do is go to a movie when it releases in cinemas. Sometimes they actually have marathons throughout the month and every weekend they'll show older Disney films and bring them back in cinemas. Um, which is super cool because you get to see things like Lion King and The Little Mermaid. I got to see The Little Mermaid in theatres last year and that was something I wouldn't have gotten to do otherwise. So that's really cool as well is just watching the movies when they come out and then buying the DVDs when they're out on DVD. And of course there's Disney Channel here. When I was younger I used to watch Playhouse Disney which is now Disney Junior and in the last few years they actually brought out Disney XD as a channel here as well which is super exciting. I've noticed they've been putting a bigger push on Disney things in Australia now which makes me super excited. Have more Disney themed live events. One of the grocery stores here Sometimes they'll have promotions that when you spend like $20 you'll receive like an exclusive pack of Disney art cards which add to a massive collection and stuff like that. And of course I've been collecting those because they're Disney. But um, yeah, so they've been putting like little hints of Disney magic and pushing um, for the Disney community to thrive here which is extremely, extremely exciting. My mom's actually visited the Disney offices here in Sydney. I didn't get to go because I had to go to school because... I was a child, <laughs> but um, yeah, apparently they're really cool as well. So apparently there was proposed plans for the Disney Wharf at Sydney Harbour, and there was meant to be Disney themed restaurants, retail experiences and stores such as Goofy's Candy Company, it was meant to be Finding Nemo themed attractions, and like hedges shaped like Disney characters, there was meant to be character meet and greets, there was meant to be rides like Peter Pan and Dumbo around, and it was going to be absolutely incredible, but then the project got shut down because the costs were just too high. And and there's always rumours there's going to be a Disney Park opening in Australia, but I haven't seen any concrete proof yet, even though I kind of am still hoping one day it might happen. Sometimes there's Disney art exhibitions that happen around the country. I visited one in Melbourne in 2011. I had a lot of trivia and fun facts and film stills and other artwork that you could just explore and take in and be amazed by. That was all Disney themed and that was really cool, but I don't live in Melbourne, I live in Sydney, so I didn't really get to spend that long there, but what I did see was pretty amazing. Another way you can take part of the Disney community in Australia is by going to Disney musicals. I went to The Lion King in 2013 and in August this year Aladdin's opening, so that's going to be really exciting. And because they've been doing a big push for stuff to do with Disney in Australia, they've actually been releasing a lot more merch for teenagers and adults and not just small children because before the only Disney stuff you could find here was for like toddlers or something but now they've brought out a lot more clothing and accessories and stuff for adults as well which is really fun. So after this year I'm actually eligible to apply for the Disney International College program which would be really exciting where you can work in one of the Florida parks and that would be absolutely amazing so I'm really hoping that I get to do that at some stage. A few years ago um, we actually went to a couple meetings of a sort of group little club thing called Disney Down Under where a bunch of Disney fans got together and they had and people that went to the parks more often brought exclusive merch and you talked about upcoming events and how to get cheap airfare and how to organize your trips to the parks and everything. I'm not sure if that's still up and running because um, I was quite young when we went and I'm sure they are but the meetings were happening really far away from where I live so we only went to one or two. But, you know, there's, there's ways that you can get involved in the Disney community here super easily. Now, in my opinion, the number one Disney event in Australia is actually Disney on Ice. Now, this is a Disney-themed ice skating show, and it travels all around the country, so most people hopefully get a chance to go to. So this year, for Disney on Ice, they're exploring Frozen for the very first time. They're also exploring Tangled, Beauty and the Beast, and The Little Mermaid, which are some of my favourites. I'll be attending one of the Sydney July dates. And I'll be vlogging the experience as I normally do and hopefully I'll order some who's it's and what's it's and I'll be able to show it off and promo a little bit over there. But um, yeah, that's probably the main event that happens annually where Australians, that's really the only opportunity they get to have Disney in their lives because that's a lot of little kids dress up as princesses to go there. Um, and they sell a bunch of plushies and they always have snow cones and like a chip from Beauty and the Beast mug. And it only happens once a year and it really sucks but the shows are incredible. So yeah, that's just sort of a quick overview summary of how um, I'm such a big Disney fan in Australia. So that brings me back to thingamavlogs. How did I find thingamavlogs, you may ask? Well, I will answer that question. And basically I found Sarah's videos in 2011, I subscribed and I basically have never looked back. So I've actually been subscribed to thingamavlogs since the very beginning. 
So yeah, seeing the transformation from the start until now, like, I already thought it was amazing and now just to see how much the community around Theme of Vlogs has grown, it takes my breath away. It's amazing. If you didn't know, Theme of Vlogs hosted a 115 hour live stream where they watched 51 DCOMs. Um, I couldn't watch the DCOMs because the lineup wasn't the same, the movies were in a different order. They were on, but just in a different order, so I just didn't bother watching them because I've watched most of them before. I just sort of focused on making sure I watched the live stream as much as possible. Like, I went to extreme lengths to watch that live stream for as, for as long as I could. Like, I used up all my data, but it was totally worth it. They did 52 giveaways because they did a giveaway per movie, so that's 51 giveaways, and then they also had a grand prize, so that's 52 giveaways. They also had guests from the DCOMs themselves come and join, and their other friends and YouTubers and other family members, and it was an incredible, incredible stream. So it's super cool to sort of hang out with them and sort of watch movies with them, but they raised over $15,000 for the Pavlov Foundation, and the Pavlov Foundation benefits children's cancer research, and it goes into helping kids with cancer not experience cancer by sort of helping them in areas of the arts like photography and stuff like that so they sort of get their minds off everything that's going on and I know that's super super important honestly Patrick, Leo, Sarah and Tiff are some of the most hardworking people you probably will ever come across like it's not easy to upload videos five days a week and have them constantly new and fresh and exciting and not only that, they totally interact with their audience all the time and how much attention to detail they put in, it's, it's remarkable. I didn't even think I would have a slight chance of even speaking to them until the next time I was in America and I don't even know when that's going to be. Um, you know, hopefully I get to live in LA for a little while in the next few years, but I don't know if that's going to end up happening. All I can do is work for it and hope that it happens, but it's not guaranteed. So the fact that I actually got to speak to them, like, it blew my mind. I have not stopped talking about it. And I just have so much respect for the content that Thingamavlogs produces, because you can literally go and watch any of their videos and you feel like you're already included as part of the community. It doesn't feel like if you haven't watched their previous videos that you're missing out because that's what it's like with some YouTubers. Like you have no idea what's going on unless you've been following them for ages. But with Thingamavlogs, it's super easy. I can just imagine how much hard work goes into everything that they produce and everything they release for us. Um, it's absolutely incredible. Like I've been making videos for like eight years now and they're nowhere near the standard that they're doing and I can barely keep up with my own. I can only just imagine how hard they're constantly working and I just want to thank them for all the personal sacrifices that they probably have had to make to keep making this amazing, amazing content for all of us to enjoy. Patrick, Leo, Tiff and Sarah are such incredible people and I'm so happy that they've earned all the success and they will continue earning success because, like, how do people not want to watch them? They're just, they're so fun and I wish we were all best friends. But you know, Straya. Hashtag Straya. But yeah, um, honestly I could talk forever about how much Thingamavlogs has changed and impacted my life because it totally has. Not only was I constantly watching their videos while I was visiting the park to try to find any little secret tips and hints and like sort of things that I was should be on the lookout for but honestly they've just those videos have cheered me up and gotten me through really hard times and honestly they inspire me every day to be the best version of myself and honestly to not even be afraid of being myself because being such a big Disney fan actually kind of made me an outcast because no one here really gets that um, there's a few, they're scattered, they're scattered, but in my area and in my school and everything like that, there wasn't anyone else that had the same love and desire as I did. Leo, Patrick, Sarah, Tiff, um, if you guys somehow are managing to watch this, thank you so, so much for absolutely everything that you're doing. You're doing an amazing job. Um, I literally had a loss of words to say. Talking to you guys was so surreal and... It just it made me so happy and I never thought it would happen and it did but you guys have showed me to never lose sight of my dreams because you honestly never know what's gonna happen tomorrow tomorrow could be the best day of your life and last Tuesday when I spoke to you guys it's pretty pretty close to that um, but yeah I'm just I'm super proud of the family and the community that theme of vlogs has created and I'm so honored to be a part of it 
and honestly, you guys have changed my life. You guys have changed my entire outlook on life. 2016 has been, honestly, the best year I've had in a very, very long time. And that's mostly thanks to you guys. You guys have kept me going and you're always super sweet and supportive on social media when I try to talk to you guys and I just, I can't deal. I love you guys so much and hopefully I get the chance to come back to LA soon and meet you guys and thank you in person for all that you've done for me and I know I haven't really explained that much but honestly like there's so much to thank you for that I don't even know if it would fit in a video but anyway um yeah so surreal hope everyone's having a magical day and thank you for taking the time out to watch this video and yeah I'll see you guys soon bye